to me, Nimsony. Welcome back to another tutorial video. This one's not an actual tutorial, but it's another one of those informational videos um, that I did last uh, a few videos ago. So uh, in the last video, I'd mentioned the fixed update and I was talking about time frames and especially delta time. In this video, I'm going to be touching more upon the time steps themselves, but I'm also gonna cover more importantly, order. And uh, what I mean by order is it, the actual sort of order in which you want to do things. This is going to highlight a little bit of a problem that you'd receive and sort of something that you have to work with in code. What you're seeing in front of you here is the frame rates themselves. Every line is showing an actual frame. So um, this is actually happening once every three frames. So I don't have such a bad frame rate that you're probably seeing here. Uh, but yeah, so you can see here, frame gap I've set to three. That means it's just, it's showing a frame for every three frames. So every time three steps go along and you can see here, one, two, three, and we render one. One, two, three, we render one. So every three frames, I'm showing a, a red line or a purple line every three fixed update frames. And this is highlighting something which is about the sort of sequence and, and position of each actual frame. So if we set it to one, and I'm going to go with a lap time of one. So we're going to see this is across a single second. This is the actual number of frames that are happening within a second. And you can see here the fixed update and the main update. Now these two do not fit together exactly. And this is something that I mentioned obviously in the last video, which is that these do not synchronize exactly. You can see here obviously the frame rate of the update right now is 59.3 and fixed update is 50. That's why they're even anywhere near close. I'm gonna change this back to a, th a th frame gap of three so we can see things properly and slow it down a little bit. And if I change the time scale, this becomes pretty obvious. So you can see here now, we're rendering more frames for every in-game second because we're running at half speed. But the fixed update obviously still does the exact same amount. So you can see the same gap. Even if we speed the game up super fast, and you can see here, I've sped the game up super fast. You're getting a few glitches in the actual gaps, but you can still see the same gaps happening on the fixed update, while the real update obviously is losing frame rate now because it's actually running four times as fast as it should in terms of game speed. And we're back to normal. Now, of course, if I go and switch off the V-Sync, you can see now that I'm not limited to 60 frames per second, we're getting a lot of update frames for every fixed update frame. Now then, off to the right hand side. Let's have a look at what order can do to our game. Here we've got two objects, left one's A, right one's B. And you can see here the actual names of them in the actual box that I've uh, got that runs the code. These are both pure physics objects. They have a mass of one. That doesn't matter, they're not gonna collide to each other, but you can see they're not is kinematic. They're not kinematic, which means that then they are actually floating in midair right now gravity is switched off if I switched it on obviously they would fall down and what happens is when I press spacebar they start moving and they both moved at almost exactly the same speed you can see there's a little bit of a problem with me pressing spacebar and I'll explain to you why that's happening anyways if I press it and just let them oop, let them move you can see that they are moving at exactly the same speed. So you can see they reach the top at exactly the same time. They pretty much both touch the thing there. Right, now what happens is when they start moving, you can see here a before and after uh, debug logs. Let's have a look as to what is going on there. So here's the actual code that runs those two boxes. I'm just gonna stop them from moving there. Here's the code that actually runs those boxes. When I press the spacebar key, I get two debug logs. So this is logging to the console before A, and that's the velocity, the Y velocity of A, and then of course the same for B. Then I apply some code to get them moving. So remember, this is pure physics, so they are actually moving, they're, they're actually changing velocity. And then straight after that, I check the velocities. Let's have a look at what the results are, and then I'll explain to you why that's happening. So here you can see, I'm just gonna se select the top one there, before, a and B are both zero. After I've written my code though, after I've actually started them moving and you can tell straight away that they are both moving perfectly at the same speed, so that code is working fine for both of them. After I've done that, 
we're getting 0 on A but 5 on B and we know very well that both of them are moving at 5. So how is A still showing a 0? Let's have a look at the code and we'll see straight away why. A, I'm applying an add force. So I'm actually using the physics engine's force system to set the velocity to 5. Well, it's not an actual set, it's actually a plus equals, which is the same as what I'm doing with B, except I'm not using the force system for B. For B, I'm setting the velocity directly. I'm adding 5 to it. Hence, the velocity changes. For A, I'm adding force. But that doesn't mean that they they work at different times because clearly in the game you can see that both of them reach the top at the same time and they're both moving at the same speed. So why is it that A is showing zero after we've changed its velocity? And that's because we haven't. The physics engine works in a specific way. Whenever you do an add force function, it doesn't directly handle all of the calculations there and then. It actually adds it accumulatively across the whole frame. So all of the add forces that you apply to A in this frame, if you did that, for example, all of them, they don't get calculated all at once. Uh, well, all, you know, individually. They will all get amalgamated into one f add force, overall add force, and then the physics and collisions are handled after the fixed update rate. Which means that that won't affect the velocity until the whole fixed update has ended. And that's why you're getting 0 and 5, respectively. Because you're getting 0 for A, even though it's moving at 5. Because the actual movement calculation is happening after the fixed update rate. After the actual fixed update frame, sorry. Now, what is that problem that I'm getting with the get key down and the get button down? Firstly, I'm doing something extremely naughty here. I should never be using get key down or get button down in the fixed update rate. And this video example has shown you exactly why. When we're looking at the actual frames here, you can see that update, because I've got my VSync off, is running super duper fast. So we're getting so many updates every time we get a fixed update. But when we use the get key down function, it's only being changed for a single update frame. So when I press spacebar, that single update frame turns it to true and then the next update frame turns it to false. So if I pause the game, for example, and I press spacebar here, then in the next frame, click. We still haven't had a fixed update. By now, the spacebar has now switched off again. So it's turned to false. We haven't even reached a fixed update. As a result, I'm pressing spacebar a bunch of times before it responds. That's because my code is bad. You must run get key downs and get button downs in the update function. And this is because there is an ordering to everything. Firstly, your add forces, there's an order to that. That's because the physics will be calculated after the fixed update. The get buttons, they need to be calculated in the update frame, which means you will probably miss them if you're running it in the fixed update. Sometimes it even has two for every time you press it. It, it can be very unusual. This is just a very unusual thing to happen and you don't want to have that kind of problem when you're making a proper game. So always work with the correct order of things. You need to understand the behind the scenes stuff. Anyways, that ends this video. Uh, hopefully you, it gives you something to think about as to when you apply add forces, when you do changes to velocity and why you don't do them in the update function. I'm never going to say don't do it because you know then you don't have that reason i'll tell you not to do it i want to give you a reason for it this is the reason you get this order problem and you get too many of the same thing happening when you're not even really making any impact on your on your system in the end um that ends this video thanks very much for watching i'll have more of these random things coming up soon